I want to talk about the pros and cons of the Crayola air dry clay that we've been using for a couple of weeks now since we've been on remote learning. I'm noticing that on the back of the uh, container it says that Crayola air dry clay is a fine natural earth which dries hard without baking. So this is actually a really good thing that we don't have to fire it. It's also a good thing that it comes in this container and so I, I would recommend this for remote learning. Um, there are some things that we've been running into that uh, are a little bit frustrating, a little bit difficult to work with, such as the fact that it can tend to break a little bit, it can tend to be brittle. Um, but before we talk about that, I want to kind of mention that it goes through a lot of the same stages that the stoneware that, you, that we work with in class goes through. And so given that, it's actually a very good clay to learn or reinforce the types of stages. So we have fresh out of the bag or greenware, unfired clay, it's very malleable. If we leave it out, it will um, get start stiffening up, getting a little bit harder, and eventually go to leather hard, where you might have to add some more moisture to it in order to get it to be more malleable. So that's very similar to what you've been working with in class. If you leave it out completely, it will go to bone dry. Once it reaches bone dry, bone dry is extremely brittle. Once it goes, but it's also very hard, uh, you can actually reconstitute it by taking your bone, bone dry clay, putting it in a baggie, such as I've done here last night, adding a little bit of water to it, and then closing the baggie up, kneading it from the outside, or letting it sit like this overnight. And then by the next day, you will have uh, moistened clay. And this is a little bit sticky still because there's still a, quite a lot of water in it, so we would call this slip. This is closer to slip than usable clay. But if I lift this out overnight or for a couple more hours exposed to the air, it will become completely rehydrated and malleable again so that I can reuse it. So all these properties make this a very good clay to work with, I would say, in, during remote learning. Um, some of the things, the differences would be uh, the fact that um, we don't fire these and we don't bake them, so they don't actually cure. They just go to bone dry. So that said, I would probably uh, consider this to be an interior clay and definitely not one that you would leave outside. For instance, if you made a cute little animal sculpture and you wanted to put it in your garden, you would have to treat it with some kind of resin or some kind of spray, a waterproofing spray or something like that um, in order to prevent it from dissolving. So we are presently moving into our one of our animal sculptures and I thought it would be kind of fun to try and change the properties of this clay a little bit and so I had my students go out and find a little bit of outside clay, natural clay from the ground or just essentially what this is, is dirt mixed with water better known as mud. So we're going to take this mud now and we're going to mix it with our clay. So I'm having students take about a tennis ball size of clay, put it in the baggie, take your mud, drop that in the baggie, and then mix it like this on the outside so that it gets kind of worked together until you feel like it's pretty worked in there. Then you can take it out of the baggie is what I've done here. And you can see it has this really cool marbling quality about it. And it changes the properties of the clay. So the clay now is a lot stiffer. It has grog in it, essentially. And um, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really cool to see how you guys use this in your next sculpture. You can also, fun part, would be to use a variation so you might add, you might make a body out of this marbled clay and then you might add some details such as eyeballs like I did over here with this head some white eyeballs 
on top of a uh, stoneware looking body. So I want you to have some fun with this and part two is going to be me explaining to you how to actually make your chameleon.